Three primal urges that stupid men should learn to control. So keep watching. Men have urges that they can't control. And this leads to high level of aggression. And when you're trying to understand hostility and aggression within a self-defense environment, there are primal urges that most people are driven by. Now these things do get guys into trouble. So the first urge that men have, apart from the obvious, and yes, this relates to that, is your hero instinct. The hero instinct is very simple. It's a man's natural protective instinct. This is a classic example of the hero instinct gone wrong. We did a video on this, and unfortunately I can't show the full thing because YouTube age restricted it, but check the link out anyway to follow for the story. For the full video, I'll put a card up for it as well. All the links in the description. This guy springs into action and gets into an argument over dogs, and as I said in the last video, and women. He thought he was protecting his woman, and if he'd only controlled that instinct, he wouldn't have been triggered to bottle someone over the head. Now you could say the other guy deserved it, but the failing of this guy in particular was that he was driven by his hero instinct. Now this is all good, apart from when it becomes maladaptive. And what I mean by that is when it works against you, it's that guy that wants to look harder in front of women. A man's behavior is so often affected when women are around, especially young guys. This guy with the dogs is a classic example of that. And this essentially relates to competition. Competition for that other stuff. You know what I mean. Now the hero instinct relates to our primitive drive to hunt, to be the provider. And it's an innate drive in our nature that can push us over the edge and end up getting us in more trouble. Street fights, classic example. This is one primal urge that's worth keeping in check. Urge number two, it's a need to give the impression that you're not someone to be messed with. It's a need to appear strong, whether physically or mentally. The problem with this is that it leads to ego battles. Here's a classic example. These two guys are in a nightclub dancing with their girlfriends. They bump into each other and straight away give each other the eye. It escalates where eventually one person pulls out a gun and fires it at the other. In a nightclub. And in this case, most men want to appear dominant, strong and in control. And in a majority of cases, that's reflected in the way that they dress, the way that they carry themselves, the way that they speak and the way that they control space around them. Their body language. The thing about impression management is that you rise to provocation quite easily. It leads to higher levels of aggression. So aggression becomes another tool for resolving interpersonal conflict. And we see this in all modalities. Road rage is a classic example. Fights in a pub, on the street, staring contests. What are you looking at, mate? All of these observations are all related to the need to give the impression that you shouldn't be messed with. And only stupid men do this because what it does is it escalates conflicts. When most men act like that, they lack confidence because confident men won't have the need or desire to show anybody that they're actually going to be strong or effective. Strong people don't do that. Could say that this relates to the primal urge of fighting from our primitive brothers in the past. But in contemporary man, this is just a form of hyper-masculinity. It might be your primal urge to appear strong and be someone not to mess with. But at the end of the day, it can get you into trouble. The third primal urge is tribalism. We are all social creatures. Even if you live on your own, you identify with a group. And your identification with a group leads to conflicts with other groups. Tribalism is really a form of group identity. And this, in itself, often gets us into trouble because we identify with a certain group. And when we identify with a certain group, anyone outside of that group, we naturally have the urge to be aggressive towards. Here's a classic example. A pair arguing at a football game. Who argues over football? It's hardly life or death. When you have a need to belong to a group, it leads to identity issues. And people will fight and die to protect their group to protect their identity. You only have to look at gang culture to see that. People die for the colors that they wear. 
the more entrenched that you become within your group, the more committed you are to that lifestyle and the more hostile you're likely to be to people outside of that group. And hostility leads to greater levels of violence. Violence that can be avoided, but unfortunately relates to your perception of your loyalty to your group, who you identify with. Forces that are controlled by group biases. And unfortunately for some men, this is very difficult to escape. Once you identify yourselves with a certain group, you're held by the standards of that group. You're driven by the group ideology. And this is dangerous because it leads to high levels of hostility. And in the worst case scenario, it could lead to greater acts of violence, gang attacks. But either way, it will cause you a great number of problems that will land you in prison. So what's the takeaway? Well, hostility comes in many forms. And you have to remember in most situations, violence is a natural way to respond for some people. And I guess the point here is, don't get sucked into it. Recognise when you need to keep your ego in check, when your hero instinct is being maladaptive and not working in a positive way. And if you can recognise it in yourself, you can temper down a lot of situations, not rise to the bait, not get drawn into stupid arguments with stupid people in stupid places. And that's a far better way to defend yourselves. I mean, it's not all about trying to be hard and impressing women. Thanks for watching. Have fun.